This is assignment 14.2, harmonizing a melody using the primary chords in a key. In assignment 14.4, you found the primary chords in a key. Now we're going to use those primary chords and put them with a melody to harmonize that melody and make it sound good, hopefully. Uh, in your assignment, you have uh, a melody there that is 10 measures long. This melody that I'm going to use for this uh, example is only four measures long, and it's in a different key, and it's done a little bit differently, but basically, uh, if you follow this, you can figure out how to do it on your assignment. Uh, you will see that there's a melody here, and the melody is in the key of, this is a major key, by the way, I would tell you that, uh, one flat, which is the key of F major, F major. Now, the first thing you would want to do is to find out what the primary chords are in the F major key. The one, the four, and the five, or the five, seven chord in the key of F major. We found out what key we're in, F major. We're going to find out what the primary chords are in the key. And then I also need to know, uh, give, to give a little more direction to your co composing or harmonizing, how many chords per measure or per beat do you need to use? In this example that I'm going to show you today, you will actually need to use one chord for every two beats of the measure. There are four beats in every measure. So you want to put a chord with the first beat of the measure and the third beat of the measure in each one of these measures. And I'm going to kind of explain how you do that as we go through. Uh, in the assignment 14.2 that you're going to turn in, you actually only put one chord per measure except for the last, next to the last measure, and you want to put two chords in there to make it sound best. So I'm giving you a lot of direction here. If you were trying to figure that, this out on your own, you would sit down, you would experiment, you would see what sounded good on the piano. But in this case, I'm kind of uh, directing you as to uh, what I want you to do. Okay, so we have a melody, uh, and we have chords that we're going to put with that melody. First of all, uh, I don't have it written here, but I'm not going to go to the trouble of uh, writing it all out, but you can figure it out on your own if you need to. In the key of F major, uh, the primary chord, the one chord in the key is the F major chord. The four chord, the four chord is the uh, B flat major chord, and the five chord is the C major chord. Now, if you go through the steps to find the primary chords, this is what you're going to come up with in the key of F major. Uh, also, remember that sometimes the 5-7 chord is the chord that might fit. And the 5-7 chord is used a lot. So this is a C-7 chord. And it's a major, major minor chord, what it would be. <clears throat> okay, so the primary chords, the 1, 4, the 5, are the F major, the B flat major, and the C major chord. Now, you are asked in your assignment to list. Whatever key you're in in your assignment, list or name the primary chords in this key. And this is exactly how you would do it. In the key of F major, the primary number one, Roman numeral one, is F major chord. Roman numeral four, four is the B flat major chord. The Roman numeral five is the C major chord or the C7 or the 5 7 chord. So that is part of that assignment, is listing that. Now, after you have figured that out, uh, what I would do 
or maybe while you're figuring it out, I guess it would be easier. Uh, I would put the members of that chord. I would list that. F major chord consists of F, A, and C. A B flat major chord consists of B flat, D, and F. A C major chord consists of C, E, and G. And the C7 chord is C, E, G, and B flat. So now I have every note that's included in those three or four chords. I know now uh, what, that was going to help me know what's going to sound good with the notes of the melody. And this is how you're going to kind of go about it. Uh, we know from what I've already told you that you're going to put a chord for every two beats. So the first thing you're going to do is to put, oh, why did I erase that? Oh, well, let me put it back because I really need it here. Okay. Uh, the one chord is the F major chord, and the notes are FAC. The four chord is the B flat major chord, and the notes are B flat, G, F. The five chord, I'm just going to put five seven, so that saves me a little bit of time there. The five seven chord is the C, E, G, B flat. Okay, so now I'm back to those. I have those. Hopefully I won't erase that again. Uh, okay, so I want to put one chord right here that will go with these notes because I said I'm going to put a chord every two beats. So that's two beats worth of notes. I want something that's going to sound good with those. Okay, so uh, I want to look at the notes that are in there. There's an F and there's an A. Now, some nice person has circled the G to tell me that the G is really not part of that chord. It's a non-harmonic tone, so you're going to have those sometimes, things that just don't work. But you have an F and an A. So I'm going to go over here to my list, and I'm going to try to find out what chord members uh, work best with the note, or I should say, what names of chords work best with the notes F and A. So I'm going to go over here and look. Uh, well, there's not much of a choice, actually, because here's an F and here's an A, and they're both in the same chord. You see they're in the one chord, the F major chord. Is there an F in the four chord, B flat major? Well, there is one there, but we want to go with probably the most. So there's an F and an A in the F major chord. Is there either one of those in the 5-7 chord or the 5 chord? No. So I'm going with the 1 chord. You know, you might try this, and it might not sound very good if you were a composer, and you might change this. But generally, it's going to uh, sound pretty good if you, you end up putting that. So... What I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that I am using the one chord with those two notes. The one chord, which is the F major chord. Now, you can list it either way. You can list it. I believe I, what I ask you to do is list the Roman numeral and then what notes are in each one of those chords at some point. So uh, the one chord, F major, and they consist of F, A, and C. Okay, so now the next step is to go to the next two beats, these two notes right here, which are F and D. Then I want to go over here to my list. Which one of these chords, one, four, or five, seven, would be a, the best fit for an F and a D. Well, here's F. Here's F. 
but here's a D. So the four chord has F and D in it. I'm going to go with the one that has the most. So I'm going to say that I am using the four chord for those to harmonize those next two notes. Okay, so I'm using the one chord for the first two beats, and I'm going to change to the four chord, which is the B-flat major chord, for the next two beats. Then I'm going to go on to the next measure. Next measure, first two beats. There's a B-flat and a D. Hmm. Well, let me erase some of this out of here. I don't know if I can. I can't actually do that, I guess. Uh, a B flat and a D. Which one of those chords fits B flat and D best? Well, there is a B flat and a D here in the B flat major chord. There's one B flat down in the 5 7 chord. So I'm not going to go with the one, I'm going to go with the chord that has the two uh, members of that chord in there. So B flat and D, I'm going to put another four chord. I'm going to kind of move this down, kind of not the best way, but I've got to move down to get out of the way here. Okay, so I'm going to put another four chord. So they not, you know I'm using the four chord with those two notes. Then I'm going for the beat number three and beat number four, which is a C and an E. C and E. Which chord looks like it would go with C and E the best? Well, pretty obvious. Here's a C and here's an E. There's one C up here, but we're going to go with which one has the most. So C and E. That would be the 5-7 or the 5 chord. I can just say it's a 5 chord right there. So C and E, I'm going to use a 5 chord to harmonize it. Okay, next measure, F and A. There's another F there, but I've already said F, so F and A. What chord fits best with F and A? The one chord. Next two beats, G and B flat. Hmm. What works best with G and B flat? Well, if I was only using a five chord, there wouldn't be a B flat there, and there'd only be one G out of those three chords. Uh, so I would say, since if I use a five seven chord, I can use a G, I can have a G and a B flat in there, and those are the two notes that are up there in the beats three and four of that measure, I'm going to put in a 5-7 chord there because I think it will sound pretty good as I do that. So I'm going to put a 5-7. I'm going on to the next measure. The notes are C, B flat, and G. Well, wow, look at that. C, B flat and G. There are three members of that 5 7 chord there. So I'm going to stick with the 5 7 chord there. And then the very last tone of the piece, which is very common that a musical composition will end on the home tone or the tonic tone of whatever key. And we are in the key of F major, so that home tone is F. So we're going to put it back to the Roman numeral chord. We're going to assume that that's what's going to happen there, that it ends up going home. All right, so now I have harmonized this. How do I know how it sounds? Mm, if I don't play, like if you're in this class and you don't play, you might not know exactly how it's going to sound, but I'm just going to show you on kind of an out-of-tune piano. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear this uh, as I play it. Here's the melody. Uh, with this 
melody. Here's the F major chord, the first two beats. I'm going to change to the four chord. Still the four chord, five chord. sound once I put those chords with it. Here we go. From the beginning, it will sound like one chord, four chord, four chord, five chord, one. Same way for assignment 14-2, and you'll probably figure out what melody that is for 14-2. This is what it's going to look like when it's written out um, neatly. One four four five one five seven five seven one. Going on to assignment 14.3, identify the inversion and then reduce to a single closed root position chord. Uh, whenever you do this assignment, you will see it will give you an SATB or an open chord, and then you're going to reduce it down to triad form or closed position root position chord form. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, uh, this might be your open position chord that would be given to you. Look at the notes and write them down. I'm a big fan of using paper and pencil or staff paper or whatever. I like to write things down so I can see it. So what I would do I would write down, starting with the bass, uh, there is a C there, then up the next note in the tenor is an A, the next note in the alto is an F, and the next note in the soprano is a D. So you have C, A, F, D. Now right away you can tell that that is not just a triad with a doubled member. It is a seventh chord. And that's what I'm getting you to do here. Take the seventh chord and then reduce it down. So you have C, A, S, D. How do you know how to stack that up and turn it into a closed position chord? Well, you can experiment around with how you think you could stack those three, excuse me, those four tones up into uh, thirds. And that's what you're doing. You're stacking them into thirds. C, A, S, and D. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to spend too much time, but I can see how I can do it here, I believe. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay. So, uh, look if I start with D on the bottom, and here's the third. I'm skipping a tone, and I go to F, and I skip a tone, which makes it another third, and then I skip another tone and makes it a C. D, F, A, C. If I write those tones out like that, and I'm just going to put it in treble clef, D, F, A, and C. Is that a closed position seventh chord? Yes, it is, because you can see that it is space note, space note, space note, space note. Could I put it in any or other order where it would work like that? You know, I can't because none of them would stack up that way. What if I tried to start 
let's see, let's just go back here. What if I tr tried to start on an F? Well, I should have done that. What if I started started on an F and I tried to stack them up here? Uh, I actually probably need some more notes to do that. Let me put some more in here. Okay, if I started on an F, uh, all right, if I did F and I skipped a note and an A, I'm pretty good there, F, A, so I have those two tones there because here's an F and here's an A, and then I'm going up another third and a C, well, I'm pretty good so far, F, A, and C, but then when I stack it up, it has to be an E. And this note right here is not an E, so when I stack it up, it would not work correctly. It wouldn't work. Watch this. Uh, it won't be space note, space note, space note. F, A, whoops, how did I do this? I did it wrong, didn't I? It, yeah, no, F, A, C, and then D. So that doesn't work. It won't work that way. Uh, so D, F, A, C is the way to do it. D, F, whoops, these aren't too good, A, and C. D, F, a and C. It's stacked up. It's space, 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 space. And then after you figure out how it stacks up in that seventh chord, I want you to find out what inversion the original is in. Okay, so here we are. D is the root. F is the third. A is the fifth. C is the seventh. All right, if it's in root position, D would be on the bottom. All right, I'm trying to get a thing to write here for me. Sorry, okay. If it were in root position, D would be on at the bottom note. Is there a D on the bottom down here? No. It's a C. Uh, okay, so D, it's not in root position. There's no F on the bottom. That would be first inversion. A would be second inversion, and if C is on the bottom, which it is, that's going to be third inversion. So I want you to tell me that it's third inversion, first of all, and then I want you to identify that seventh chord. You need to identify the name of the chord, as well as its quality. And I also want you to name those notes from the bottom up. So when you answer, uh, you would write third inversion. I'm just going to do it all down here on the bottom. It's a third inversion. What chord is that? D, F, A, C. Well, you have to figure that out. I'm not going to go to the trouble right now uh, to do that for you. But if you need to, you go back to the book, you figure it out with the intervals. D to F is a minor third. F to A is a major third, actually. I'm running out of room here. If I start erasing, it's going to mess me up. But uh, I'll put, I'll try, let me use this uh, arrow on the other side to show you here. Maybe I can. All right. D to F is a major third. And F 
excuse me, a minor third, and F to A is a major third, and A to C is a minor third. So that is a D minor seventh chord, a minor seventh chord. So I would write D minor seventh. Whoops, except I spelled it wrong. Let me go back here. D minor seventh chord. And then I also uh, want the notes listed from the bottom upward. Uh, so you're going to list for me D, F, A, and C. That's going to be how that goes. There are three of those to do. Now, there are all different types of chords. I'm going to tell you that there might be a major minor chord seventh chord, there might be a minor minor seventh chord, there might be a diminished seventh chord, so you're going to have to figure out what they are. The main thing you have to do, though, is to stack those up. So there is uh, that D, F, A, C all stacked up neatly. We are figure it out what inversion it is. Now, someone asked me yesterday, they got confused. Whenever you do seventh chords, when I show you how to invert these, then I just take the bottom note and put it on the top. So the D that's here ends up on the top, and the F that's here ends up on the, the top note, and the A ends up as the top note in the next one. But when you write these out in four-part harmony, you do not have to put that note that you changed to the top note. It can go anywhere. In the next chord, this D could be put, for example, uh, that D could be put down here. It doesn't matter if it goes to the top or not. What determines the inversion is the note that is on the bottom. I'm just saying if I had several different notes here or whatever, it wouldn't matter. I just stack them up and I put the bottom note to the top to show you how the inversion goes. But you don't, when you put four-part harmony, you do not have to end up putting that note up back up to the top. All that matters is the note that's on the bottom. So in this D minor seventh chord, if D is on the bottom, it's a root position chord. If F is on the bottom, it's first inversion. If A is on the bottom, it's second inversion. And if E is on the bottom, it is third inversion. That's how you're going to tell. Uh, you were asked on this to name the chord and to name the quality. I went through that. You name the chord D minor 7. Minor is the quality, minor 7. Uh, this is just another example of four-part harmony, these four notes, G, E, C-sharp, and A, G, E, C-sharp, and A. So those are four different notes. You want to reduce it down to the single closed root position chord. How would I do that? I've got to figure out how it's going to stack up again. Uh, I'm just looking at it right now. I really didn't know what kind of a chord it is, but I see how it's going to work. What are my four different notes that go with this? The four different notes are G, E, uh, C sharp, and A. Is that correct? Yeah. G, E, C sharp, and A. So I can tell how they're going to stack up into uh, the thirds. It's going to be like this. It's going to start... Mm, let me do it in bass clef because I won't run out of room on the staff that way. It's going to stack up as A. This is a C sharp. I haven't put it in there yet. A, a, C sharp, E, and G. Do you see how that's going to stack up in the thirds? 
Okay, let me try to put a sharp in there so you don't get confused. Okay, A, C sharp, E, G. If I tried to stack those up in a different way, it wouldn't go. It would not be in that space, 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 space order. So I'm re I reduced it down to the single closed root position chord. So here is the root. A is the root. Now in the open position chord, what note is on the bottom? It is a G. Here is the G, right here. So what inversion is that going to be? If G is up there, then here's, uh, if, uh, if F is on the bottom, it's root position. If C sharp's on the bottom, it's first inversion. If E's on the bottom, it's second inversion. And if G is on the bottom, it is third inversion. So I'm looking at it as third inversion. Then I have to name what the chord is. A, C sharp, E, G. What kind of a uh, seventh chord is it? I happen to know that it's a major, uh, major seventh chord. Major minor seventh chord, or just a seventh chord, however you want it. So here it is. Here's the chord over here in the closed, closed position. Uh, it doesn't have that uh, treble, but it's treble clef A, C sharp, E, G. Here, here it is with A on the bottom. Here it is with C sharp on the bottom. Here it is with E on the bottom. And here it is with G on the bottom. Those are the inversions that you have to figure out. A, major, minor, seventh, and third inversion. That would be your answer. Okay, so that takes us through all the assignments of uh, Lesson 14. Thank you very much. Archive recording.